This one is for Optimus because uh, who knows? In this video, I'm going to share eight highlights from Tesla's Q4 earnings call and a summary of what happened in 2021 in terms of profitability. This video is gonna be helpful if you're a Tesla investor and also will give you a product roadmap of what's coming and what to expect in 2022. So I listened to the hour long earnings call. I took it down to eight highlights that I think should be important to everyone. So hopefully that saves you some time from going back and having to listen to the earnings call. So let's get right into it. Number one. The volumes have grown by 90%. They're at their highest operating margin in the industry. They're at a 14% operating margin in terms of profit. Their accumulated profitability of the company has become positive since the inception of the company. So I thought that was really cool. And their gross margin increased to 29.2% in quarter four, excluding regulatory credits. A lot of Tesla's profitability in the past had been coming for those regulatory credits, and now they're starting to phase that out, which is good. Number two, and I'm also gonna give you my opinion on some of the things that were said on the call. Elon had some interesting takes at times when people asked about things like the $25,000 car and when the Cybertruck was coming. We'll talk about that shortly. The focus in 2022 is on Texas and Berlin, and production has started in Texas, but the tough part is scaling the production. So that's what they're gonna take 2022 to do to perfect that increased build quality. So yes, the factory is up, it's ready to go, but then hiring all the people and training people to be able to build cars is a whole process. The Model Y with the structural battery pack, this is what everyone's talking about, the 4680 cells. They are going to start delivering these after the final certification vehicle, which should be done at the end of Q1. So sometime in March is when these are going to start rolling out. What I'm waiting for is for the Tesla website to update, reflecting the new range and performance of the vehicles, hopefully lighter weight too. It should be about 400 pounds lighter, 16% more efficient. If these numbers are accurate, the Tesla Model Y long range should be getting over 400 miles of range. That's what the percentages say. So I took the percentages they say the car should increase by, and I used the current range of the car. It took it to like 405 or 406 miles. So that's a really big deal if that's true. So delivery should start soon. If, if you're asking me, I would say within the next six months, they start delivering these cars because again, Elon's timelines, I think reflect the timelines of like what's going on in Mars, not totally sure. Also, if you're wondering about this shirt, this video is sponsored by Into the AM, and this is uh, Elon, and this is me, and we're having ice cream in outer space. So if you use code Jeebs, you too can get a picture of you and Elon on a t-shirt, save 10% on intotheam.com. We're floating in space, we're having ice cream, and we're, we're talking about internet memes, and it's very nice. So intotheam.com, thank you for sponsoring the video. Link in description, save 10%. You're welcome, back to this. Hopefully less than six months, uh, we're getting those. No new locations are being announced yet as far as new factories. The chip shortage is still an issue, which is also why they're not going to be introducing any new cars this year. Kind of a letdown, we'll talk more about that shortly. They also expect to have 50% more growth in 2022 over what they did in 2021. They delivered 900 some thousand cars, so another 50% growth on top of that, which is awesome. Full self-driving will be the most profitable part of Tesla. Right now, it's $12,000. It says we'll achieve full self-driving before the end of 2022. That's another thing. Personally, I, I doubt that will happen. I hope it happens. But just the track record for full self-driving in the past and what he said it should be at by this time, we're still behind. Hopefully it happens. We'll see. The other thing I want to ask you in the comments, you need to help me out here. I love driving my Tesla. It's fast. It handles well. It's nice to be in. has a great sound system. Whatever but I don't see the value in paying $12,000 for a license that doesn't transfer with me. So if I could buy the $12,000 license and then I could uh, sell my Model Y, get a Model S, plug my license in or type the code in, then I would see the value in having that. But the fact that you lose that with a car, really the only way to gain that value back is to sell it privately because Tesla does not value it when you sell your car back to them. So there's that part of it. And also, when I had the full self-driving subscription, it was very unimpressive. It changed lanes, picked the fast lane. It uh, read red light, green light, dead. It did that, and then also, what was it? It took exit ramps. I just didn't see the full value in it, and I see all these beta testers online. They have this insane thing where it's driving on back roads, 
I just don't see the value yet. Let me know what the value is because Elon even said in the video, you do not want to be looking in the rear view mirror when it comes to FSD subscription. So I'm just having trouble seeing the value. Help me out in the comments. Product roadmap, number three, scaling output is their main focus. Their vehicle output would decrease if they introduced more cars. Again, part of this is because of the chip shortage. So they're waiting for that all to catch up and then they will introduce the Cybertruck and the Semi and the Roadster coming up. Uh, so no new vehicles this year. Also, uh, you guys have been clickbaited by several other YouTubers talking about the Model Q or whatever it's going to be called, the $25,000 little hatchback. That's why I stayed away from making that video is because I knew there, there was no way that they were going to all of a sudden can't keep up with demand with a 3 and the Y. Now they're going to introduce a $25,000 car. They'd be backlogged for years. It's just not coming anytime soon. Now, when Elon was pushed about the Cybertruck, the Semi, the Roadster, what's coming next, he said the most important is Optimus, the human robot, AKA Tesla bot, who made an appearance on this channel. I'll have that video linked in the description. He said Tesla bot or Optimus will be more significant than the vehicles and will eliminate the labor shortage. To those of you who are worried about building the wall in Mexico being the issue for the jobs, the issue is in Texas, folks. We need to build a wall around Texas because Optimus is there. And Elon says, quote, they are going to move parts around the factory. If you were nervous about your job being taken, <laughs> we're screwed. In honor of that, <sighs> I think it's time. This one is for Optimus because uh, who knows? Does your wife stay at home all day? Buy an Optimus. <laughs> Women start having like baby robots. Optimus is on the loose. I found that interesting. I mean, I know te uh, Tesla is a technology company. They also produce cars, and that's what a lot of people forget, including myself. And uh, Optimus will take over. 4680s are not a constraint to their volume numbers. The first ones are gonna be delivered in Q1, as I said earlier. Growth will be at or above 50% just between Texas and Shanghai. Shang Shanghai. Number four, $25,000 compact car. They're not working on it. And this was, this was one of the part where I was like, when the uh, investor asked him this question, he said, you're asking the wrong question. He said, we should be talking about when cars are going to be fully autonomous. And for me, for the average person, if you want to have electric cars be what's on the road to improve our air quality. They're far more efficient, they perform whatever. They're great daily drivers, great for commuting. I don't understand for the average person how they're going to be saying, oh, I want my car to be fully autonomous so I can use it as a robo taxi when I'm sleeping. What if Tesla's your only car, you have kids, kids are jumping on the bed, hits their head off the head post and you have to take them to the hospital, but your Tesla's out robo taxiing. So you can see how that would be a problem. Also, you're gonna go and spend 50, 60, $70,000 on a car, and you're telling me you're gonna want random people to get in it and vomit in it and put gum in the seats. And there's all of these things that could happen. I just don't think the take rate on RoboTaxi is going to be as popular as Tesla thinks compared to if Uber buys a bunch of Teslas and has them do RoboTaxi and has a team that can service them if one goes down, that makes sense to me. Like people like myself, I make YouTube videos for a living, that's great content. But for the average person, they probably aren't gonna wanna bother. I see that being a more corporate thing down the road. But we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Would you just robo-taxi your car out? Is that why you're buying Teslas? I know some of my subscribers have like 10 Teslas and they're waiting for robo-taxi to come out to cash in. I don't know, you're gonna have to let me know. Also, perpetual or term licenses. This is what we talked about breaking up FSD. Some people would like to have lane change. Some people would like to have it read the stoplights. Just like where you can buy the acceleration boost for $2,000, it would be nice if you could buy features of FSD to meet your lifestyle, meet your needs. He said that would be too complicated. Elon Musk, that's how you know that's BS because Elon Musk is figuring out how to get us to Mars. Okay, Mars is, it's, uh, so if you go beyond all the blue, it turns black and Mars is out there and we're all going around the sun, okay? So he's gonna get us there, but um, having perpetual or term licenses is too complicated. That's BS, Elon, we know it, you know it, but that's okay. Uh, Dojo is on track for something useful this summer. 
Success is not 100% certain, Dojo is not needed for FSD, and they wanna be optimistic about it and not sell themselves short. And that's actually what I really like about Elon Musk, is he's an optimistic guy. He'd rather overpromise and underdeliver. <laughs> so, uh, but I like that, like for an engineer, don't limit yourself. Let's see, how can we solve this problem as opposed to, is this problem solvable? So I really like that about him, that he's optimistic and doesn't want to sell himself or his engineers short. That's good. Number five, Tesla insurance. It's currently offered in five states. Arizona was just added. So Texas, Illinois, California, Ohio, and Arizona. I will be trying it out. So subscribe to the channel so you can see my review on that or don't. They also noted if you're on a feedback loop, there are statistics that show you are going to be a safer driver. If you're trying to get your score up there, you're gonna drive more smoothly, you're gonna have smoother braking, maybe not risk going through a yellow light. So there will be safer driving, which will lead to lower rates, which is great. They also said, what are the take rates in the current states that have Tesla insurance? And they would not give a direct answer on that. They didn't give a percentage and it might come to Europe by the end of the year. Number six, Cybertruck production. There's a ton of new technology in the Cybertruck and I think it looks Pretty good. The photos that have leaked out online that are all over Twitter right now, they look good. I like the wheels on it, it had big uh, chunky tires. Uh, the only part I didn't like about it, the windshield wiper looks really stupid. But again, I, I don't know why they can't just tuck it down or whatever. I'm not an engineer. So there's a ton of new technology and because of the increase of cost on everything right now, They've erased the cost from the website and delivery dates before you could get the entry level Cybertruck for $39,000. So the chances of that happening, and also they said the technology they wanna put in the Cybertruck is really cool and it's not quite fully developed yet. So they're just going to keep developing it and then when the Cybertruck finally comes out sometime, hopefully in 2023, everything will be ready to go and hopefully they can get the cost down to a point where a ton of people can adopt that new technology. They just said the average Cybertruck cost is too high and they're trying to make it affordable. They'd like to eventually sell 250,000 of them per year. Number seven, software is where most of the margin is going to come from between robo-taxi and full self-driving software. Software is extremely profitable. They're looking to get into a non-nickel system. Anything formed in the star before supernova is what Elon said, which I found was very funny. They're looking to transition to iron over time for standstill battery packs like the Powerwall. They have all the good technology. They're trying to find a way to implement and then scale it. That's the toughest part. That's what Rivian is gonna fall into and all these in Lucid who very promising companies, but they're heading into the toughest part of scaling and ramping uh, the demand for their vehicles. Again, on full self-driving, you don't wanna be looking in the rear view mirror. Uh, value is going to be a very big number, especially when robo-taxi rolls out, so the value in terms of full self-driving, because robo-taxi is going to be extremely cheap, cheaper than Uber and Lyft and all of those companies. By the time that comes out, FSD is going to be crazy, and I think this is what people are playing the long game for, and I don't understand enough about the technology. I'm not gonna sit here and fake it to you guys. That's where I don't, quite see what the value of the car is and then that leads us into our final point number eight and I think this is a little bit controversial as well. He was pushed again about the $25,000 car. When is that going to happen? And he said again you're asking the wrong question. You're thinking about this incorrectly. He said if you have a $50,000 car and it has a 5x utility it's really a $10,000 car. That statement is a little bit disconnected because if you wanna have someone driving a Tesla over a Honda Civic, for example, which is approximately $25,000, how are you gonna tell me that they should be spending $50,000, but really it's a $10,000 car because it'll be creating money for you through robo-taxi and things like that. So in that sense, when he gave those answers, I felt like there was a better way to address it and just say, right now we can't keep up with the demand, we have to focus on the three and the why. That was a little off-putting. I hear where he's coming from, but for so many years, he said we need to drive the cost down and make these affordable for people. The other side of that is when you look at Ford, when you look at GM, the leader in EV technology, you have to understand that they are taking a loss right now. Their cars look like they are priced competitively. They're taking a loss right now so they can build up enough, enough of a customer base to get repeat customers, hoping they can ramp up their electric production to be profitable in the future. So it looks like they're close, but profitability wise, it's not sustainable. And that's why a lot of these legacy automakers will go under in the next 10 to 15 years uh, with the new EV technology coming into place and Tesla being so far ahead.
I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I'm really interested to see what you guys think in the comments below uh, as far as some of the answers that he gave. And, you know, everyone on Twitter said the call was amazing and all this great stuff. I think the call would have been amazing if they would announce the date for the Cybertruck and the semi was rolling out and the Roadster was coming. Or, But right now those are all on pause totally. The best part about the call, in my opinion, was the profitability is great. They're going to be able to scale production and the 4680s are coming for the Model Y and the structural battery packs. That's all amazing stuff. So thank you for watching. Visit intotheam.com. Please like the video. And that's, that's all I have to say. I appreciate your guys' support. New video every Thursday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, this was an emergency video. Wanted to get the information out to you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Drop a like. We'll see you next time.